intro. Hi, my name is Joey and I am a fantasy artist and illustrator. I work in special effects, design, concept, story, puppetry, a little bit of anything and everything, honestly. And today I wanted to invite some of you who may know me through Coralport Studios as the tail design and maker. Um, and I am going to go through some of the um, things I do when designing tails. I've done it for many years uh, globally, designing these different mermaid and merman tails for other people to be made into prosthetic pieces for swimming. And a lot of them ended up looking like these here. There's usually a front and back view. These are done with colored pencils because it's all very mixed media. Uh, a lot of the ones I do nowadays are digital on the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro while using Photoshop. And that's a little bit of what I'm going to show today. Well, this is what I call my beastie. And it is a workhorse of a machine. I've been able to animate on that computer, uh, do illustrations, paintings, you know, photo renderings and all that good jazz and fun stuff. But the main thing I have done on it for other people in the community is tail design. So let's jump right into it. So this is a tail I just finished designing for April. This is not the completed one. I have posted the other one on Instagram through the Coralport Studio page. But the line work and colors were all rendered here in Photoshop. I'm actually going to take this line work, uh, excluding some of the fins, I'm going to clean it up a little and make it something completely new. There. Okay, so now I have the line work that I had made previously. It makes it a bit easier um, to recreate a lot of these details without having to fully redraw the line work. Now, I got into designing tails for people because as a teenager, I really, really wanted to swim with a tail, um, but couldn't afford any of what was available at the time. This was many years ago before monofins and fabric tails were widely seen or even known. Um, nowadays, you can get a lot of really great quality tails, but I had to start with just drawing because that's all I could do. I had paper, I had pencils, and the will to do. Uh, <laughs> and I knew that it was something I was passionate about, especially looking and seeing other performers in tales. I remember watching a few, there were only maybe two merman at the time, and I would wait on bated breath for like anything new, any like new swimming videos to come out. That way I could at least feel slightly seen within the community as well. Um, I was not yet deeply involved at that point, but their tales were inspiring and that was enough to make me want to do everything within the community as well. I remember, I think the first tale maker I was aware of was Raven with Mirbella Studios, uh, very well-known, gorgeous tales. Um, next was Mer Taylor, followed very quickly by Finfolk. These were the like spearheads of the industry, it seemed. And then following them very quickly, there were a, was a second wave of tale makers. And I loved seeing everything that anybody was making, even the at-home DIY crazies that, um, some of those tales I know didn't quite reach the water, um, but just seeing people come together through this art was really inspiring to me. Uh, at the time, I was living in North Carolina, designing tales just for myself, but sharing them online. I had gone to a mermaid convention and was very inspired to do at least something, anything, uh, to be a part of the community more more fully. And 
I had made my first silicone tail at that point. It's solid black uh, and looks very hideous, but I absolutely loved it. It was held together with a uh, fishing line towards the end, not exactly a professional build by any means, but definitely one full of heart, <laughs> we'll say. Um, and I still have it. It's many years old now. I made that as a teenager. And I think it was one of those things that I was halfway through making it and committed to making it in the attic of my house at the time. Um, and I was making a really big mess. I destroyed part of the carpet in that process because silicone loves just getting into everything when it spills. Uh, <laughs> I started working with this material because it seemed to be the only one that resonated underwater the way I wanted my drawings to look underwater. Like if I could just take what was on paper and put it out into the world, I knew that silicone was going to be the medium I wanted to use. Um, yeah, and I was approached online um, through Instagram by a mermaid who wanted to commission me to do a tail design. And I had never really taken art commissions online before. It was a brand new thing for me. I was kind of worried that they weren't gonna like what I could make, but I did it anyway. I just said, well, what do you know? Okay, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. Um, and I did it within a few hours. I did it like dedicated that day to working on that tail and it came out really great, but I was super nervous. I submitted it and I, the whole time I was panicking going, oh, they're going to hate it. They're going to hate it. This is definitely, why did I even do this? Um, I was super nervous, but it turned out really great. And that tail can actually be seen out and about. It has been a part of the community for years. Um, it's, Mermaid Mezzi, she um, performs in it. It was uh, sent out to see through sea tails uh, and was made in, into silicone. It's a beautiful tail. And every time I see it, I'm so happy and so grateful because that's a little piece of my art journey is captured through her art performance as a mermaid, uh, which is just super cool. Um, yeah, so as you can see, I'm just kind of like playing with some colors here, just blending things with the tool, not going into any like super detail. I'm not gonna worry about the top part of this tail because I wanna just play with the fluke. Uh, I typically put down one color and when we'll explore the different gradients uh, that come from it, different lights and hues, playing with intensity, of course. Uh, I don't generally have a plan when I go into designing a tail unless it's been commissioned. And then there typically is the discussion of how many fins do you want? What is the overall style that you're into? Because designing a tail for another person, it's a very personal work of art for them. Um, so I always take into consideration any elements that need to be adjusted so that it does reflect the person that it's being made for. These tails have always ranged in detail. However, the more detailed they are, the more excited I get about them, the more challenging they are. And I have always loved seeing what's new, what people are drawing from. Some people I work with, they come in and they know exactly what they want. And they even have maybe some sketches of it from previous artists or the ones that they've done themselves and they just want it either digitized or done traditionally through my style to just bring it all together. And it is really awesome to get to know these people because nobody's mer journey has ever been the same. And it's just, it's really inspiring. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to figure out, I'm just playing with spots and textures now. This is all gonna be blurred out for just the texture detailing having a bit of fun and crazy. You can see that these there are lines through here that I'm gonna be working with. They're all around in this area. I will fill those in. I'm not entirely sure with what color though. It might be a contrasting color. It could be 
just a texture. I'm going to blur this out real quick. Yeah, so you can see how this like changes the texture of the fluke without taking away from the line work. Um, yeah, this is a brand new fluke design. I doodled at the airport flying between uh, New Jersey and Atlanta. I had quite a bit of time to spend just chilling and I love sketching at the airport. I don't know if anybody else is like that. Um, it brings me great inspiration. Sometimes the people freak me out because I'm not a very social individual. I do like being around people I know, but not so much out in the public, you know. But I do love flying. Flying is so much fun. And I do a bit of flying throughout uh, life and career and all that good jazz. I think the most fun I've had with certain tail designs is going through and getting to um, work with fish for inspiration. Like a lot of people draw inspiration from nature and they use that in their tales of different wildlife, even plants that they are drawn to, which I love pulling because it can, there's so many different things you can do with that. I've seen a lot of tail designers and tail makers pull from the ocean as well, um, and even like natural bodies and rivers. I love rainbow trout is my favorite freshwater fish. And then the coelacanth uh, is my favorite ocean dwelling fish. Coelacanths are very, very shy and gothic and they were my favorite fossil as a kid. And then when I learned that they were still alive and around in the ocean, I got real excited. Uh, I think I was in fifth grade quite a while ago, but still exciting. There seems to be an influx of people who have fallen in love with this majestic, wonderful fish of the deep, um, which is really cool because I thought I was like one of the few people who, who knew what this fish was. And there are a few uh, people in the Murr community who swim in coelacanth tails now. And that was just like the, I was just cheering the whole time. I've sculpted several pieces and elements for a coelacanth tail to be put into production, started to cast it and the detail wasn't lining up with what I wanted. So I have put that tail on hold for now until I can revamp some of the tools to actually get it to the level of detail I want. It is a beast of a tail to work on. <laughs> I love working in silicone and with silicone tails. I have a few on the floor behind me right now, which you can go over to my Instagram page to see. Um, I've only gotten to swim with them a few times. I really wish I had a more local spot to swim in as I am landlocked in the, as a mer and don't have easy access to water. But I do love going to Murr Convention. So if you know of a Murr Convention, you can always just shout it out to me and I'll see if I can pull that off in the future. Anyway, so this is just generally a tale. I'm going to mess around with these details and see how I can kind of draw these in. I went with red because it's contrast to blue. That way I could see it while I was drawing it, but it won't necessarily stay red. I like what that's doing. I used the screen tool and now I'm going to play with hue and saturation and just do a slide bar and see how that might change. Mm, it's not as dramatic as I thought it was going to be. Do normal. Ooh, actually that blue looks really good. I do like the darker colors. I'm going to keep it like that. Uh, a fun trick that I like doing with digital renderings, and I do it with some of my um, traditional art ones. You can see that there's a small outline of a darker color with the lighter on the inside. To do that digitally, it's a lot easier than going over every single detail by hand. I just duplicate the layer, change it to either a lighter or darker hue underneath, and then fade it so that it appears and you'll see, go to blur gallery and should do it. 
So like this outline has now appeared around all of these details, um, which just makes, it gives it a little bit of depth. I am gonna blur this though, because it's a little harsh. There we go. Just to make it look a little, a little more natural. I don't wanna go too crazy with these details because then it can become overly busy. I think I just merged them by accident, oops. There we go. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Yeah, so this is just like a little bit of the process um, of digital tail design. I might finish this one later and post it as a full design. I'm not quite sure. It was just as I was rambling, what came together naturally. I will show a little bit of the detailing process real quick. Um, I'm gonna shift this over a bit. Hopefully you can see it. And do um, a quick finishing process. So what I tend to do when it's at this stage, uh, if it's the full tail, of course I haven't done the upper half, but I'm not gonna focus on that. I'm just focusing down here. For me, uh, stylistically, I tend to go through and I will merge the color layers first, just all down the row so that I can just have that line work isolated. I will change the line work sometimes in color. I like the dark one for this, so I'm gonna leave it. I do a small levels adjustment to see if I can get the contrasts and colors through in a different way. I really like the harsher contrasts and darker tails. Uh, that's just my personal preference. And then I'm gonna play with the vibrancy of this tail. I can bring up the vibrancy and the saturation. If I bring it down, it's more natural, which I really love. There we go. So this is what it looks like now. I am going to merge the line work so now it can all go together. Do a little bit of cleaning. There's spot cleaning that I could do. Uh, this one came out fairly sharp, so I'm going to leave it. And the next part is to render a style that I do with a lot of my digital tails. I put it into a mode so that it looks like it's been painted. Uh, and you can kind of see like the style just by hand, what it, it looks like. If I go to filter, I can stylize it and make it look like an oil paint. Um, I don't go too crazy on this. It's just to get rid of some of the more pixely parts and pieces and it smooths out some of the detail. Then I go back in with a white liner. But yeah, this is a little bit of the process and all in natural timing so you can see what an unplanned tail design would be like. Yeah. So I hope you really enjoyed that. It was really fun to just doodle without a plan and to explore this fluke design. This is the second time I have colored this fluke specifically. The first time I went with a lot of contrasts of red and blue, and you can see that one posted on the Coralport Studios Instagram. I called it something daydream. Ah, oh, I'm so bad. I, there are so many different tail designs. I forget the names of them constantly, uh, but they are all titled. And uh, this one I will be posting later that you can see. Uh, this was really fun. And I'm not sure how the rest of the tail is going to look. If you have any suggestions of fish that I should do inspired by, I do community tail designs all the time, ones that people vote on and put in their input of like, hey, do this color tail or maybe less stripes, more spots. Uh, I listen and read through as many comments and parts of what the community sends me all the time. I love hearing from everyone. And yeah, this has been a tail design moment with Joey. Um, and I have silver hair today. That is not something that's staying around. I love it, uh, but it is extremely temporary and I'm kind of like a walking glitter bomb today, <laughs> and, which is really fun, but also chaotic. And I hope you really enjoyed. So yeah, cheers everyone. And all right, here's my, my coffee at 
3 o'clock in the afternoon.